This is the Mini Pet Commodore Pet Replica from Ten Mouth Software and sold by The Future Was 8-Bit. The original Commodore Pet was one of <laughs> the very first home computers for the masses, alongside the Apple and the TRS-80 models back in the 1970s. It was prolific in many public schools during its time, so it was widely used by students everywhere learning the exciting new world of computing. Like its forefather, this new replica pet is also quite game-changing, and it actually can be configured into many different models of pet. Today we're going to be sharing the story of how we got this thing working, and boy, is it a doozy. City Man. Sometimes we make really big mistakes making our videos. Usually we will cut them out in the edits, but this time we're going to share with you an utterly dumb thing that I did. As hard as it is to admit it, I really have to swallow my pride here with things I'm about to tell you. A couple of years ago, I wanted to get a real Commodore pet machine so that we could work in to our channel our F1D0 AI character. We've been hit by a Retronic Energy Photon. Unfortunately, these machines are getting rare to find these days, and when you do find one, they're way out of our budget. Well, then I found out about the Future was 8-bit mini pet replica. I thought this would be the perfect solution and that would fit my budget and allow me to display a real screen of a functioning Commodore pet. Albeit, not a real Commodore pet, but kind of a real Commodore pet. So I went to the Future Was 8 Bits store webpage and filled out the order into my cart, added an SD to pet drive emulator just for good measure, and then I pulled the trigger. It arrived within a couple of weeks, and boy, let me tell you how excited I was to get that and get it up and running so that I could finally record our F1D0 character. I set up the cameras to record everything I did and was even going to make a video of me putting it together. Well, needless to say, I messed it up bad. That is an understatement. I put the project down for a week or so to sort it out what I did. I thought I knew how to solder, but that became further from the truth as I found out later from Retro Tech Dan. More on Dan in a moment. Anyways, after my time of mourning, I came back and took a hard look at what had happened. I had burnt the circuit board beyond recognition. There was a huge burn hole in the board that was exposing some of the inner circuits and the multi-layered circuits. The short version of all this is I destroyed the board. And you want to do more hardware hacks on me? No, thank you. Full disclosure, I paid money for this product from the Future Was 8-Bit, and I destroyed it. This story has a couple different parts to it, though. So let me go ahead and tell you about the first part. The first part is my experience with the Future Was 8-Bit. I'm here to tell you they're the very best people in the world to, to deal with. So I knew this was my mistake. So I reached out to the Future Was 8-Bit via email and explained my situation. I told them I would pay whatever the cost, but could you please send me a new board? About a week went by and I didn't hear anything. I was starting to get worried. In my sinking desperation, I emailed them again, literally begging for me to purchase a new board at whatever cost. To my delight, I was replied to with, we're trying to figure out what parts you're going to need at first I thought, oh no, I wasn't clear to them. To be fair, you aren't always clear. Yes, this is me realizing that, Clicky. Anyway, the email went on. There has been a new board revision, and some components were removed and others added. So in other words, they were doing homework to make sure I got everything I needed to get this mini pet up and running. I thought, how awesome is that? They're really putting in some decent effort to assist me. Bada boom, bada bing, I did the transaction for the cost and received a new board and the new parts in another couple weeks. On top of all that, we got a free pet mouse pad with both orders, so that's kind of cool aside. I was delighted that the future was 8-bit was there for me. Seriously guys, thank you. This time, I was going to be extremely careful with my soldering and of course, all the desoldering I had to do for the other components. 
Luckily, I didn't have to desolder everything because the ICs were socketed and I could just install brand new sockets in the new board. And this time, I was going to make sure that I got it right. Meticulously doing one connection at a time, letting it cool down. I spent hours doing this, trying to get this thing perfect. But I didn't. I had to put it all together, turned it on, and nothing. The board was dead. I've uh, destroyed this mini pet sound here. Let me see it. You think we could fix it? I don't see any reason why our 21st century tech can't fix this. Hmm. Let's get it on the workbench. Okay, let's go. Let's go. They, in fact, did not fix it. Find out what happens next to the mini pet in part two of the City's End mini pet saga. Thanks for watching. City Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our new programming series. And be sure to check out all the other vintage computer related videos on our channel. Right here on City's End. Wait for my city's end for a different